In the grand halls of Hyde Park, where the Hudson River winds its way past the ancestral Roosevelt estate, a young boy was molded by the weight of expectation and privilege. Born into a world where family names carried the echoes of power and influence, Franklin Delano Roosevelt seemed destined for greatness. His mother, Sarah, with her fierce determination, crafted his upbringing with meticulous care, while his father, James, instilled in him a sense of duty and responsibility. Yet beneath the veneer of this gilded life, shadows of uncertainty loomed. His father's failing health, the complex dynamics with his half-brother, and the towering figure of his cousin, Theodore Roosevelt, whose legacy cast a long and daunting shadow over his young life. As Franklin matured, the sheltered confines of Hyde Park gave way to the austere halls of Groton School and the bustling avenues of Harvard University, where he began to forge his own path. But even as he ventured into the world, the expectations of his lineage followed him, whispering the question that would haunt his early years. Could he ever step out of Theodore's shadow and create a legacy of his own? The answer to this question would not come easily. For Franklin, the journey from a privileged childhood to the highest office in the land would be fraught with trials that no one could have predicted, challenges that would test not just his resolve, but his very identity. The story of how this privileged young man became one of America's most revered leaders is one of unexpected twists and turns. And it all begins with a bold, ambitious decision that would set him on a course few could have foreseen. I have seen war. I have seen war on land and sea. I hate war. We know now that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Compelling History. Today we'll begin our series of biographical videos starting with one of America's most consequential presidents, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But before we begin, we'd really appreciate if you could give this video a like. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. Speaking of more videos, make sure you check out some of our previous series covering topics like historical monuments or inflection points throughout history. Now let's get into the video. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was born on January 30, 1882, into a world of privilege and expectation at the family estate in Hyde Park, New York. His parents, James Roosevelt the War and Sarah Delano Roosevelt, both hailed from wealthy, established New York families with deep roots in the country's social and political fabric. Synonymous with American aristocracy, the Roosevelts, Aspinwalls, and Delanos shaped Franklin's upbringing which reflected the traditions and values of the elite. James Roosevelt, already in his 50s when Franklin was born, was a gentleman of the old school embodying the values of the Gilded Age. A Harvard Law graduate, James chose not to practice law, opting instead to manage the family's business interests, which included ventures in railroads and coal, after inheriting a substantial fortune from his grandfather. He was a prominent bourbon Democrat and was deeply involved in his community through various philanthropic roles. This sense of duty and responsibility was something he sought to instill in Franklin. Though somewhat distant as a father due to his age and responsibilities, James interacted with Franklin more than was typical at the time. However, it was Franklin's mother, Sarah, who had the most profound influence on his early years. Sarah Delano Roosevelt, 26 years younger than her husband, was fiercely protective and dedicated to molding Franklin into a paragon of character and intellect. She once declared, My son Franklin is a Delano, not a Roosevelt at all, emphasizing her belief in the superior lineage she provided. Sarah was the dominant figure in Franklin's early life, managing his education and social development with meticulous care. He was homeschooled by tutors until the age of 14, ensuring he received an education that was both rigorous and expansive. His studies were supplemented by frequent trips to Europe, beginning as early as age two, which helped him become conversant in German and French and broadened his worldview. These experiences laid the foundation for the global perspective that would later characterize his presidency. Franklin's early years were also marked by his relationship with his half-brother James Roosevelt, Rosie Roosevelt, from his father's first marriage. Although the brothers were not particularly close, Rosie's presence was a reminder of the family's complex dynamics. 
The young Franklin was also keenly aware of his father's declining health, which added a layer of vulnerability to his otherwise privileged upbringing. A pivotal figure in Franklin's youth was his illustrious cousin, Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore, a war hero and rising political star, cast a long shadow over the younger Roosevelt's life. His dynamic personality and reformist zeal provided a powerful model of public service, one that Franklin deeply admired. Theodore's influence was profound, shaping Franklin's aspirations and guiding his path toward a life of public service. At 14, Franklin began his formal education away from home at Groton School, an Episcopal boarding school in Massachusetts. Groton was known for its rigorous academic and moral training, and its headmaster, Endicott Peabody, preached the duty of Christians to help the less fortunate, urging his students to enter public service. Franklin, while not a standout student or athlete, was well-liked and began to develop the leadership qualities that would later define his career. His time at Groton was formative, challenging his sheltered home life and broadening his social perspectives. Following Groton, Franklin attended Harvard University, where he studied history and economics. While at Harvard, he became a member of the Alpha Delta Phi fraternity and the Fly Club and served as editor-in-chief of the Harvard Crimson, a role that required ambition, energy, and the ability to manage others. Although not the most dedicated student, Franklin's time at Harvard was crucial in expanding his network and refining his public persona. He was deeply affected by the death of his father during his freshman year, an event that forced him to mature quickly and take on greater responsibilities within his family. After graduating from Harvard in 1903, Franklin enrolled in Columbia Law School but left in 1907 after passing the New York Bar Examination. He briefly worked at the prestigious law firm of Carter, Ledyard, and Milburn in its Admiralty Law Division before deciding to pursue a career in public service. This decision, influenced by his admiration for Theodore Roosevelt and his growing interest in politics, set him on the path that would eventually lead to the presidency. Franklin's early life, marked by privilege, expectation, and a deep sense of responsibility, laid the foundation for the resilient and determined leader he would become. His childhood experiences, the influence of his parents, and his exposure to the broader world all contributed to shaping the man who would one day guide the nation through some of its darkest hours. Franklin D. Roosevelt's early career was marked by ambition, political acumen, and a determination that would later define his presidency. His journey from a state senator in New York to the governor of the same state was anything but conventional, reflecting a man born into privilege yet driven by a sense of public service. FDR's entry into politics was significantly influenced by his family status and connections. Roosevelt was well-positioned to pursue a career in public service, with his fifth cousin, Theodore Roosevelt, serving as a model of progressive leadership and likely inspiring Franklin's uh, predirigal ambitions. After graduating from Harvard and briefly attending Columbia Law School, Roosevelt married Eleanor Roosevelt, Theodore's niece, which further solidified his ties to the political elite. Initially, Roosevelt intended to run for the New York State Assembly in 1910, but when the incumbent chose to seek re-election, he shifted his focus to the State Senate. His decision was a bold move, given the district's strong Republican leanings. Undeterred, Roosevelt launched an aggressive campaign personally managing every aspect, including extensive travel across the district by automobile, a rare luxury at the time. His efforts paid off, and Roosevelt won his seat in the Democratic landslide of 1910, a surprising victory. Taking his place in the New York State Senate in 1911, Roosevelt quickly emerged as a leader of the Insurgents, a group of Democrats who opposed the dominance of Tammany Hall. His role in the 1911 U.S. Senate election deadlock, where he and fellow insurgents blocked Tammany-backed candidates, earned him significant attention and marked him as a rising star in the Democratic Party. His support for Woodrow Wilson during the 1912 Democratic nomination further solidified his position, though it created some tension within his family. Roosevelt's performance in the state Senate led to his appointment as Assistant Secretary of the Navy under President Woodrow Wilson in 1913. This role was a natural fit for Roosevelt, given his passion for naval affairs and his extensive knowledge of the subject, fostered by his earlier influences and experiences. He played a crucial part in expanding and modernizing the U.S. Navy during World War I, advocating for the construction of new ships and the implementation of advanced naval technologies. Roosevelt's work earned him respect and recognition, establishing his reputation as a capable and forward-thinking leader. However, 
Roosevelt's burgeoning political career was nearly derailed in 1921 when he was diagnosed with polio. The disease struck suddenly, leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. The initial prognosis was bleak, with doctors offering little hope for recovery. This period was marked by immense personal and physical challenges, but FDR's response to his illness was indicative of his indomitable spirit. He refused to let polio define him or end his political career. Roosevelt sought every possible treatment, traveling to Warm Springs, Georgia, where he found some relief in the warm waters. The therapeutic environment provided not only physical rehabilitation, but also renewed his sense of purpose. It was during this time that FDR developed the public persona of a determined, resilient leader. He worked tirelessly to regain his strength, employing braces and canes to appear as physically capable as possible, though he never regained full use of his legs. And despite his physical limitations, Roosevelt continued to pursue his political ambitions. In 1928, he was elected governor of New York, a position he used to advocate for progressive reforms and social welfare programs during the onset of the Great Depression. His leadership during this crisis, emphasizing government intervention and support for the most vulnerable, set the stage for his later New Deal policies as president. FDR's ability to overcome his polio diagnosis and continue his ascent in politics is a testament to his resilience and determination. He managed to conceal the full extent of his disability from the public, understanding the importance of projecting strength and vitality as a leader. This era of his life demonstrates how Roosevelt's personal struggles shaped his political philosophy and leadership style, laying the groundwork for his historic presidency. In this way, Franklin D. Roosevelt's early career and battle with polio are not just a prelude to his presidency, but are central to understanding the man who would lead America through some of its darkest times. His early experiences in governance and his relentless fight against physical adversity shaped his legacy as a leader who was both compassionate and tenacious, traits that would define his later years in the White House. Franklin D. Roosevelt's presidency, beginning with his first campaign in 1932, ushered in a transformative era in American politics and society. At his election, the United States was in the grip of the Great Depression, with unemployment soaring and economic despair pervasive. Roosevelt's promise of a new deal for the American people resonated deeply with a nation desperate for change and stability. This is about to pass legislation that will greatly ease the mortgage distress among the farmers and among the homeowners of the nation by providing for the easing of the burden of debt that now bears so heavily upon millions of our people. Well-considered and conservative measures will likewise be proposed within a few days that will attempt to give to the industrial workers of the country a more fair wage return to prevent petrol competition prevent unduly long hours for labor, but at the same time to encourage each industry to prevent overproduction. I have no expectation of making a hit every time I come back. What I seek is the highest possible batting average, not only for myself, but for the team. Theodore Roosevelt once said to me, if I can be right 75% of the time, I shall come up to the fullest measure of my hopes. Upon assuming office, Roosevelt swiftly initiated an ambitious suite of programs known collectively as the New Deal. These programs sought to provide immediate relief, initiate economic recovery, and reform the financial system to prevent future crises. Among the New Deal's signature initiatives were the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Public Works Administration, and the Social Security Act. These efforts fundamentally reshaped the relationship between the federal government and the American people, establishing a social safety net that would influence U.S. policies for generations. However, Roosevelt's presidency was not without its controversies. His decision to intern Japanese Americans during World War II remains one of the most criticized aspects of his administration. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which authorized the forced relocation and internment of over 120,000 people of Japanese descent, the majority of whom were American citizens. This act, driven by wartime fear and racial prejudice, is widely viewed as a significant injustice and a dark stain on Roosevelt's legacy. Another contentious episode was Roosevelt's attempt to expand the Supreme Court in 1937, often referred to as the Court Packing Plan. Frustrated by the Court's opposition to several New Deal measures, Roosevelt proposed adding more justices to the bench. 
This move was met with strong resistance from both Congress and the public, who viewed it as an overreach of executive power. The plan's failure marked one of the few major defeats in Roosevelt's otherwise successful political career. As the global situation deteriorated in the late 1930s, Roosevelt's attention increasingly turned to international affairs. He recognized the growing threats posed by Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. Although the American public largely favored isolationism, Roosevelt began to prepare the nation for the possibility of war. Through initiatives like the Lend-Lease Act, which provided crucial support to allied nations, he positioned the United States as the arsenal of democracy. The people of Europe who are defending themselves do not ask us to do their fighting. They ask us for the implements of war, the planes, the tanks, the gun, freighter, which will enable them to fight for their liberty and our security. Emphatically, we must get these weapons to them in sufficient volume and quickly enough so that we and our children will be saved the agony and the suffering of war which others have had to endure. After the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, Roosevelt led the nation into World War II with unwavering resolve, guiding the country through the immense challenges of global conflict. Throughout his presidency, Roosevelt's health was a significant concern due to the polio he had contracted in 1921. Despite his efforts to project an image of strength, the demands of the presidency exacerbated his condition. By his fourth term, Roosevelt was visibly weakened, yet he continued to serve, driven by a profound sense of duty. His declining health culminated in his death on April 12, 1945, just months before the end of World War II. Roosevelt's presidency is a study in contrasts, characterized by visionary leadership during times of unprecedented crisis, yet marred by significant errors in judgment. His legacy is a complex tapestry, woven from visionary leadership and marked by profound challenges, whose impact reverberates through history. Thank you so much for watching our video on Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We hope you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more videos in our series of biographies. If you are, make sure to drop us a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next video covering the life of one of South America's most controversial leaders, Salvador Allende. Comment below what other topics you'd like to see explored in future episodes or series. This channel is not possible without your support making it happen.